Right. I think that's us live broadcasting out. Hello, everyone. Hello, Peter. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, it's good to see you. Um, and today we're talking about a topic that I know you have very strong and positive feelings about. We want to run through the, the British waters categories of UPY um, and give some, some thoughts, have a bit of a discussion about it, give some tips for entering, hopefully some suggestions that might lead to success for those of you planning to enter these categories. Um, before that, though, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, I need to remind people, um, anyone who's done a book in the last year or two who hasn't entered it into UPY before, we'd love to see it in the Underwater Photography Book of the Year Award. Um, it doesn't have to be a book in the English language, although if you're watching the UK category, it's probably not going to reach you um, on that. But um, we judge the book purely on the photos in it. So don't worry if you haven't published in England. They can be self-published books. They can be um, you know, books that have come from big publishers. Um, um, I think the main rule is that a certain percentage, I think it's at least 60% of the pictures in the book need to be underwater pictures. But books of all types, but we judge them very much as on the photography, not on the, on the, on the written words of the book. So just something to think about when you're entering. And we've had some fantastic ones every year. And we do our best also um, to promote all the books that are entered. Um, the uh, next thing I need to remind you is the closing date from UPY. It's not imminent, but um, you are allowed to enter already. So do get your entries in. The closing date is the 5th of January 2021. And you can register and enter and read the rules and all that sort of thing on our website, which is underwaterphotographeroftheyear.com. So please have a visit there and, and, and get involved. It would be great to have everyone involved. And then um, today, hopefully, we won't be as long as we were on the previous one. So if anyone's watching and wants to ask us any specific questions about entering and the competition or anything like that, please feel free to write them in the comments below, um, or even if you just want to say hi. And um, if we have some, we'll read them out at the end and try and answer them. But... On to what we want to discuss in the general topic today, um, which are the UK, the British waters categories of UPY. And I know that they're categories that you always really look forward to judging every year, Peter. I do. Um, uh, on several levels, I think obviously UPY um, was derived from the Brighton Film Festival back in the um, 70s and 80s. And, and um, you had some success there, I, I believe. Well, <laughs> I, 1984. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the because of that heritage, obviously mm. the um, British section. Um, uh, I like to see progressing, and one thing that was slow was actually the sort of the thought process behind shooting British shots um, and allowing the photographers, allowing themselves to think, well, this can never be as good as the Red Sea or this can never be as interesting as Anilau. Or, um, but the subjects are there. Um, they've always been there. Um, we've now got technology which allows us to photograph them better, sharper, brighter. Um, and certainly in the last couple of years, the, the, the level of British shots has been um, very inspirational because people are actually applying what I can only sort of describe as world-class techniques in British waters. Mm. And it really does show. Yeah, no, I, I, I think the British categories are, for us, always very interesting to judge. I think it's, it's quite a challenging area because there is kind of finite subject matter. We have finite biodiversity in the UK. And as a result, you know, now we've been running the sort of the modern version of UPY for, for six, six years already. There is a, you know, there is an element of, well, we've had winners of that species and this species and the other species. So I think there's always a sort of a, a gauntlet laid down to photographers is to find something new, is to, you know, on your dives, is to find a subject that we haven't awarded. And it doesn't have to be a subject that hasn't been seen before, but have a think about what we haven't awarded 
I think Nora Storm's um, frog last year, the, the froglet, was a great example of that. You know, someone just going into their back garden and creating a beautiful, beautiful image of a subject that we've obviously had lots of frogs and, and, and toads and, and that sort of thing, but actually finding a slightly fresh, um, fresh shot in that area. Um, I did just find this actually online. I'll see if I can get it to come up on the screen. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might be coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Photoshop when you need it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't Photoshop you live to look like that. <laughs> need one of those. Um, anyway, right. Um, back to they've actually got the full results here. I won't, I won't pull them on split screen. Um, I think the other challenge though is to think where, think carefully about what you enter. Now there are certain subjects that are very charismatic in British categories. Um, you know, subjects like seals, subject looks like um, blue sharks. And chances are we'll award at least one of those each year. But we're not going to have a top 10 all of blue sharks or a top 10 all of seals. And also, we're always going to judge those pictures based on what we've had before. And we've had some stunning shots before. So if you've got something that you feel raises the bar or shows something very original with those subjects, I think it's really worth entering. If you've, you know, but I think if you've just got a standard shot of those subjects, which you're pleased with, it's probably not the best choice for UPY. Think about what you've got that's a little bit different. I think the same goes as well for very popular dive sites, is that underwater photographers tend to get gravitate towards certain dive sites, you know, whether it's Swanage Pier or B Babacombe. And I think classic subjects of those dives, um, photographed in classic ways, probably won't stand out. But classic subjects from those dives photographed in original ways will. So just think a little bit about your competitors when entering. Yeah, I think you add to the, the way I'd look at it is that if you're entering a shot um, and we use seals and um, blue sharks as an example, but they're good examples. Mm -hmm. um, if you enter those shots, you will actually be competing with shots from last year because um, it, it's, uh, we still remember them. And the, there's a, a benchmark set. Um, so if you have a new subject, um, you, you, you're fresh to the comp competition mm. and judges are looking for fresh images. So I'm not saying don't, but just be aware that, um, that certain subjects um, do get uh, over-entered. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, yes, and they're, like you say, they're not just competing with lots of those subjects in the year, they're competing with the previous ones as well. Um, yeah. That yeah. said, I think, you know, those charismatic subjects, you know, it's a lot easier to make an eye-catching eye image with a seal than it is with a limpet. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's, you've got to balance those things. And that's the challenge, I think, of the, one of the challenges of the UK categories. Right, um, I'm going to swing us on now and let's start working our way through those categories. So the first of the British waters categories is, is wide angles, and it's a pretty simple category. It's for wide angle images shot anywhere in the UK. We're actually not too prescriptive in our definition of wide angle, but as judges, if we say that's not a wide angle, it's not a wide angle. But we're quite happy for you to stretch that a little bit into sort of, you know, maybe mid-range lenses. We've had a few down the years within this category that aren't super, super wide, but they certainly have a, a scenic view. Right. Um, and you've chosen a picture to talk about from the past winners here. Mm. Um, this one um, by Mark Kirkland. Yeah, this is just uh, what I would call a, a celebration mm. of UK diving. Um, the diversity, the colours. Um, it's a particularly good shot because um, you, you know exactly what's going on, but the background... Um, contributes so much to this and traditionally British water shots everybody has thought well it's always dark it's always and therefore it's okay for the background to be dark well the background actually contributes a significant amount to an image especially in the UK mm. so here's a great example of you know what we have to celebrate in our waters and hopefully more to come. Yeah, and, and, and I hope we'll see some more images from this area as well. This is Sutherland in, mm. in northwest Scotland, where I've just been actually um, a few weeks ago. And I think it's a, it's a fantastic frontier for diving. I mean, there's a, a relatively new dive operation up there who's just been running for a, a few years. And they're, they're still in the stage of going out. And I think they told me they had something like 130 
we must dive that again sites that they've already found. And they keep going out and going, oh, let's just try that when they're trying to go somewhere further away and finding something amazing. I think it's a, it's a real, really interesting area for, for diving. And um, this is a picture from up there. Um, so, um, but yeah, it shows, yeah, the effort mm. of just going a little bit different, right? Um, my one from British Wide Angle is, um, it, are these in incredible pair of orcas. Um, and, and one thing I would sort of like about this is, although the pictures have to be from the UK, you don't have to be a British photographer to enter this category. So if you've been to the UK within the last five years to shoot underwater photos, you, you know, whether it's a basking shark trip or a scapa flow trip or, or a seal or um, trip or something you've come over to the UK to shoot, you know, you, you can enter this category, these categories. And often the overseas photographers have a slightly fresher take on, on our subjects. Um, this must have been a heart-thumping heart moment when, when these guys, presumably hunting for seals, um, came and, and checked Melvin out in the, in the Shetland Islands. Um, uh, but just what an incredible moment. And, you know, we, you know, I think we're always going to be drawn as judges to photos that really feel, wow, that's not something we've seen before in UK waters. Whether it's subject matter or whether it's photographic technique, photographic vision, those things, you know, if they, when they've got that freshness, they're going to rise to the top. Um, what a wonderful! Uh, just lovely to see this picture. Mm. I haven't seen it for a little while. Mm. Okay, the next British category is British Waters Macro, um, which is for ma both macro and close-up images shot in the UK. So it's not just about macro and super macro. You can have a relatively, you know, I would say as a rough guide, maybe to a piece of A4 paper, sort of size of picture frame. Um, within this so you know it can be super tiny things but you could shoot sort of a, a mini scene um, I think if it begins to verge into wide angle you've got the problem the judge is going well there's so many good pictures here and that one is it really a macro out it goes um, but I think this is this this one tends to go up and down a little bit some years it's incredible and some years it feels mm, these are the best of, of the bunch but they're they're not so I'm hoping we'll get some really interesting and strong entries in this category this year and your pick from the past, Peter, is mm -hmm. is this nudie by by Malcolm? Yeah, yeah. It, it's um, it's a great example uh, that, that uh, hopefully people have been listening to what I've been bleating on about for far too long. Is that the background is uh, a, a huge contributor to an excellent image and. Mm here especially here that the the background is actually beautifully out of focus jewel anemones um fantastic pink but it's it's just a great example of um and i'm going to call it international technique for for want of a better term but um being applied to to our waters to our backyard and uh it's just a, a lovely delicate shot and uh, is a great example of the attractive um, deliveries we can produce here. Mm. I'm just just reading your comment, judge's comment on the on the screen there, and it says a breath of fresh air, mm. you know. And I think that yeah. you know is exactly you know the key. Something that to us feels you know, oh, we're not used to seeing that from the UK. And I, I just think the whole mm. color palette of this. I mean, you know, it's a picture mm. that would sell you know UK marine life incredibly well, just because it's just punch and impact, and and, and it's really fantastic. Okay. Mm. Um, this one was a uh, category, macro category winner from back in 2016, taken by Dan Bolt. And I think this for me is a, is a fantastic example of the freshness that we're often looking for in terms of UK entries. First of all, it's subject matter that I've not seen photographed much in the UK. You see it photographed overseas where maybe um, shark eggs can be easier to find. It's quite hard to find shark eggs underwater in the UK. And then the time of year that you need to dive to see them in this developing stage is also sort of winter time in the UK. So that also makes it more difficult to get this picture because there's far less people in the water at this time of year. And then to add to that, um, Dan, the photographer, has not only used a really interesting creative technique to backlight this egg, to manage that, that lighting very difficultly. It's also a very eye-catching composition with lovely diagonals, it looks almost like a, a butterfly or something from a, when you see it as a thumbnail. And then you zoom in and you've got this incredible shark, you know, backlit, still inside its egg case. And I, I just think it's, for me, it's, it's, you know, it's a fantastic example 
of what can be done in the UK. And I think in most years of the competition, this would have found itself pretty close to the top of the pile in the British entries because it remains one, although it's from back in 2016, it remains one of our standout entries. Okay, on to um, the more meatier one. So the, this is the British Waters Living Together category. This is a very special category within UPY as it's sponsored by the Crown Estate and it's a chance for us photographers to, to really take images that can be used and hopefully make, make a difference. Um, the Crown Estate um, um, are, manage the, the seabed um, around um, England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And, um, they, and I think it's a, it, the images that we can enter in this category um, are really useful. Um, an update on this for, for this year is that actually this is the only category within the competition that has prizes and it still has the same cash prizes it's always had. And this is really because these have been, were in place for these years anyway. So since we had the prizes and, um, already. Um, and also this category is free to enter this year. So you don't need to use up any of your entry budget in terms of money and also pictures to enter this picture. So I hope a lot of British photographers want to enter this living together category. So the category description. Um, we are happy for photographers to interpret the living together theme in a broad fashion in this third year of entry. Um, the seabed and marine waters around the UK are home to a vast array of species and natural habitats. It's also a place for people to enjoy recreational activities such as diving and sailing as well as providing natural resources such as renewable energy and food. To celebrate this wide-ranging value of the British seas, we're looking for strong, striking, both macro and wide-angle images that showcase the variety of nature and human activities on the seabed. Now, I realise the longer you make a, a, a category description, almost the harder it is to find images that suit it. Um, but I would encourage photographers to interpret this pretty broadly. Any picture that you feel could fit the theme, we're likely to, to feel feel pretty similar to as well but we want those striking images that tell something of the story and particularly the human story of the UK seabed so easy examples for photographers to use are pictures taken around jetties piers um, harbors um, I think there's a lot of interesting images that come out of that environment but also you saw the sailing and things in there that other uses you know pictures that maybe show how the sea is used could be interesting in this category as well so I think if you've done any in unusual photography this year, have a think about how it might fit this category. And because it's free to enter, I think you should be free to, to chance some images and find that you've actually got plenty of images that we consider suitable. Um, does that sound a fair sum up, Peter? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more that the more you categorise a category, the harder it becomes. But uh, I would say we're looking for images that celebrate relationship between man and the underwater environment and that uh, if that depicts a healthy um, juxtaposition um, that's bang on target in terms of uh, what this category is all about and um, you know if you look through your uh, your images uh, you know if you dive on wrecks a lot structures a lot um, the, the the relationship is there healthy marine life um, with uh, man-made um, structures and it, it, it's surprising actually um, how broad this category is yeah. and I, I really hope that uh, certainly with free to enter and the only one with the prize that we can get a bumper crop this year. Mm. Yeah and, and even you know, those that many underwater photographers have been diving in places like Swanwich Pier this year and have taken some lovely wide angle stuff when there was good visibility there in the summer and those pictures where the pier is clearly part of the picture, I think will be highly suited to this category. Yeah, um, very much. Great. So um, with that in, in mind, here is a photo, um, Peter, that you chose to highlight called Lovely Legs by Arthur Kingdon. Yeah, it, it, I mean, this just sums it up in spades. You, you, the, um, the marine life wouldn't be here without the structure. Mm. And the marine life enhances the structure and uh, it, it creates a um, life on life situation. Life attracts life. Mm. Um, and this is a great example. Uh, I know, Alex, you're talk talking shortly about another completely different image that fits the bill equally well. 
But this sort of shot, um, obviously, it, it's a strong contender. It's a great shot. Um, and you look at it and you know exactly what's going on. Um, so it's it, it's a very easy image to judge. And this, this was this was a mine by Victoria Walker from um, the 2019 competition, and you know just you know shows an, an amazing event as well. You know we want these pictures to be eye catching, and you know there's just beautiful light in this picture. There's this amazing aggregation of these mackerel that got trapped in the in the harbour at low at low water. And then the human element of people being fascinated by these subjects is a real storytelling picture as well. Okay, and then on to the final British category, the last thing we're going to talk about today, which is the British Waters Compact category. And this is for wide angle or close up and macro shots taken in British waters with compact cameras. And compacts are any sort of fairly basic camera that hasn't got interchangeable lenses. So it could be a phone, it could be stills from a GoPro or another type of action camera like a para lens, um, does not in include, so you're not allowed to use any interchangeable lens cameras. This is open to all, and the aim of this category is to encourage um, more British divers to take photos in British waters. Um, and we, we run this category really hoping to show people that you, know, you don't need to buy the absolute top of the range camera to take beautiful pictures of the, of the British seas. Um, and, and that's what we're sort of looking for. So we, we really want stunning pictures um, of, of great subjects in this category. Um, I'd really encourage people to get out and enter this category. Um, we always have very nice winning pictures in this category, but it tends to be dominated by a relatively few number of photographers. And I know from going diving in the UK how many people are out there with compact cameras and how many of them are posting lovely pictures online, yet don't feel confident or don't feel motivated to want to enter UPY and I can assure many of them that they'd do really well if they did. Um. I, I, I like to add to that that the I can't help but feel in the in the mindset of the compact user there is a sort of well I'm not worthy enough um, but actually you've got your own category yeah you you shoot to the strengths of the compact and uh, you you shoot great images mm. and uh, you know we actually love to see this category getting better and better yeah and um, this is one you chose um yeah the, um this for me is like make the most of what you've got now uk waters as we all know you know um can be far from perfect and so what you have to do and here's a great example is um for your main subject and um, get the water column as uh, as small as possible um light it well and then in the background um, use uh, another technique to create uh, a, a depth to the image from back to front. Um, and this is just a lovely example. Um, and it, it, it doesn't matter that it was taken with a compact. I mean, it, it, you know, it doesn't, uh, say, it doesn't say this is a compact shot. It's just a great uh, UK image. So um, same technique, uh, different equipment, mm. but uh, a great result. And then this is the one that I chose to, to show, which is by, by, um, by Paula. And just, you know, it just shows that, you know, even with relatively simple pictures, you can take some beautiful marine life pictures. Um, and this is just a John Dory, you know, probably taken on a trip down to Porth Kerris, um, you know, popular diving place. But, you know, lovely, lovely shot, you know, maybe cropped a bit from when it's taken, but you know, we're, we're fine with all of that. And I think it just looks really, really nice, really eye-catching. And what a beautiful fish. And I think that's something we want to showcase is, you know, people can catch a beautiful British subjects with relatively simple underwater camera equipment. Right. That's us pretty much wrapped up on the British categories. Um, thank you, Peter, for being part of these. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for the invite. We'll okay. leave these up throughout the whole competition and they'll probably exist long into the future as well. So hopefully they'll provide a useful guide to these categories um, and some tips for people um, so that you can increase your chances of success when you enter by that all important deadline of the 5th of January 2021 through our website, which is underwaterphotographeroftheyear.com. So without further ado, thank you very much and goodbye. Uh, and goodbye to you. Looking forward to it. <laughs>